languages are less and less spoken and uh, then we talked about religion which is 98% Muslim country there are uh, Turkish Jewish people Turkish Christian people uh, but the numbers are again pretty small there's a majority as a Muslim country and then they talked about some of the agriculture and the foods that we grow in Turkey they're going to show you some of the stuff, but uh, lastly they mentioned that our cuisine, the Turkish cuisine, comes from Ottoman heritage. So with this map, I want to show you what that actually means. Okay, we actually, uh, guys, can we, can we try to move to the 10th slide? On just slide, thumbs on the Okay. Well, I, I actually put two maps on here. One is for the immigration patterns of Turkish people, the slower one. We can share you uh, this slide. Yeah, I can post it on Canvas for you, you guys to see later. You can see the map, but the, the immigration map actually in Turkish, like country names are written in Turkish, but I mean, map is a map in every language, I guess. There's <laughs> not much difference there. Uh, what you're gonna see there is actually this in the 10th slide, the second map actually shows more of an Asian Area. So Turks, actually, the ancient Turks, the original Turkish people, uh, was uh, living in Asia south of China. Okay, we were uh, back then um, an immigrant population where we didn't have a settled lifestyle, we didn't have structures. So we moved according to our own, I guess, Leisure time, I don't know. <laughs> and we kind of kept raiding Chinese uh, population, and they said, okay, enough of you guys, you're gonna put up a wall to keep you outside of your uh, parts. And there goes the Great Wall. Have you heard of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the Turkish tribes, there were several of them, started to immigrate towards to the Europe. Those second map actually shows the immigration uh, ways. So uh, in the end, they ended up in Anatolia. This is Anatolia, today's Turkey. That part here. Uh, from a very tiny city, right here in the yellow part, a tiny, tiny city, a guy called Ottoman um, decided to negotiate with others because the Anatolia then had small cities run by families, but they were all Turkish. They were like cousins to each other, but they had their own management. So this guy, Ottoman said, let's try to build our own community all together. So they started to um, expand their land. And in Anatolia, although most of them were Turkish or Turkish descendants, they started to uh, conquer the around regions. As in this map, the colored area actually shows 
the land of Ottoman in different times. This area is Africa. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. This area is Africa, Middle Eastern, till the Caspian Sea. Do you know where is Caucasia? Do you know where are the Caucasian people comes from? Caucasia is right there in the edge of the Caspian Sea. So Caucasian people are actually Asian, maybe. <laughs> they have to, the land is in Asia. So, and uh, you see the Ukraine, Russia, a bit, Balkanians, until uh, Austria. Austria, right? Do you know the uh, famous uh, piece of Mozart, the Turkish march? Mm -hmm. That period piece actually comes from when the Ottoman Empire tried to take over Vienna and couldn't. So uh, Mozart actually wrote that piece uh, with hearing the Turkish soldiers' cannonballs. Like there are some, some of the parts of the songs actually resembles the cannonballs. And then they made a food called croissant. Do you know croissant, that croissant-shaped food? Uh, after that um, battle with Austria and Ottoman, they made this croissant-shaped uh, baked good, says because croissant is a sign of Islam. So it, it meant we defeated you, so we eat your religion. Oh. <laughs> it's a very tasty, and I like it. <laughs> that kind of symbol behind it. So why I wanted to show this map to you is I need to clarify one thing. Ottomans actually didn't have major wars with these other countries that they conquered. What they did is negotiate. They were very political people. They did not care about anyone's race, religion, or language. What they did is when they conquered a new area, they took a bunch of Turkish people and settled them into the new area for learning their religion, language, and cuisine, culture, okay? So whenever they expanded their land, they gathered more cultural objects from those populations. This is why Turkish cuisine is very right. There are so many different recipes, foods, because we kind of learn them from all, all the people around um, around this Anatolia region and today you can see for example baklava I guess my students gonna show you a couple of foods uh, you can see that this type of foods actually can be found all around the neighboring Turkish countries like Greece has their own version of baklava uh, Lebanon has their own version Middle Eastern countries Iran the Persians have their own versions so because the country was uh, managed by similar people for 600 years, I guess. So the culture was all influenced. This is why I wanted to show you what is the Ottoman cuisine comes from. It's a very big area, and I think my students are ready to show you some foods by regions. Are you ready, guys? Arkadaşlar? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you, Zainab. No problem. <laughs> Can you see our presentation? No, we are still stuck on slide nine. Okay, then we close our presentation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can you see us? We can see you. Okay. So, Hocam video. <laughs> yeah, you can show it. Actually, we made a, a video about our marketplace. Hope we can show you. I think there's a technical. Can you see that? No, we see you, we don't see the video. Can you see now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. 
project. Okay. And now we will show you some of the foods of our culture. And the first one is spirit. <laughs> um, do you see this? Yes. Uh, we call spirit. Uh, a traditional Turkish street food and breakfast product. Uh, many people prefer in the morning because uh, they are simple, uh, affordable, tasty and nutritious. Made from molasses and sesame, it's a kind of bread we call it simit, uh, edible with jam and cheese. <laughs> Do you see this? Um, it's a kind of dessert we call halka. The dough is served with hot and crispy. It's a very colored dessert. Uh, it looks and tastes like churros, the traditional Spanish dessert, but we eat without chocolate. It's really tasty. <laughs> Yeah. Guys, this is, I think uh, you guys all know this, this is Turkish tea, the most common uh, drink in Turkey and uh, it's black tea, but it's more delicious than uh, common black tea. <laughs> <laughs> You're very proud of our tea. <laughs> 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 uh, this is 
steak tartar alaturka. We call çiğ köfte. It is ingredients are bulgur, onion, tom tomato paste, garlic, oil, paprika, salt. Optional, you can add meat. Generally, we eat it without meat because it is cheap and healthier than. We eat çiğ köfte with lettuce, lavash, uh, lemon, and... And... <laughs> <laughs> and I don't. <laughs> and I don't. Lettuce, lavash, lemon, and I don't. Green-based meat ball type of thing. It, it, it usually has, it original recipe has meat in it, but it's usually produced without meat. Because it's cheaper and easier to see. And if you saw the Iva, it's actually a yogurt drink. Yogurt is uh, for us a salty uh, beverage. It's not like a dessert. Well, some people eat it as a dessert. But for us, it's more like a salty beverage. And if you add some, uh, you can do it at your home. You can add some water to it. Shake it really well, that's going to make it a It's very watery yogurt. Manta is a delicious food special to Turkey. Ingredients, flour, egg, water, ground beef, and yogurt. Manti is like minced beef in savory pastry with yogurt. It takes time to prepare and it's tiring work, but when you made it, you're gonna love it. <laughs> These are dumplings, Turkish dumplings. Our dumplings are very tiny, very tiny, so it takes, it takes a lot of time to produce them because they're done by hand, very tiny. And as you can see, there are, there is yogurt on top of that. So we use yogurt as a salty, salty sauce, like your sour cream actually, it's called sour cream. <laughs> Ezogelin is a delicious soup. So, ingredients, red lentil, rice, small bulgur, onion, canola oil, and water. You can make ezogelin with ease. It's traditional soup. You can have ezogelin soup all about Turkey. Okay. This is a type of soup, and soup is a main part of our cuisine. We always start our meals with soup, and this is a lentil and rice-based soup with some spices. It's very tasty. Uh, I'm gonna talk about aşure. Uh, it is also called mouse pudding, and it has grains, fruits, dry fruits, and nuts. And it has no uh, animal products, and it's delicious. This is a type of dessert. Uh, you know, uh, stories of Noah's Ark. It's in the Bible, right? Yeah. The, uh, what we believe is when that incident happened, Noah's Ark, Noah actually made a, a meal for uh, the sheep, the sh for the sheep, uh, with whatever they had in the kitchen. So this dessert actually has whatever you can find in your kitchen. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> beans, corns, a lot, a lot of different materials in it. It very diverse dessert, but it's actually a bit sweet because it has sugar. So that's actually for the sugar. It looks like Vendetta is able to join us. Uh, and here is sugar in Turkish and water barek. <laughs> uh, it's sheets of 
So are boiled in large pans, then cheese and oil at between the layers, and we eat this with tea. We eat the, almost everything with tea, <laughs> and it's delicious too. This is, this is And this is sarma. Uh, sarma is a dish of grape leaves uh, rolled around a filling, usually based on a combination of grains like bulgur or rice. And this one is made from rice. Uh, and sometimes it has also meat. This Hocam is, is one of the uh, food recipes that can be found many, in many Mediterranean countries. If you try a Mediterranean restaurant, you might actually find them in their menu. Uh, the difference is in Turkey, they are thinner and longer, where other Mediterranean countries actually makes it a, a more bulky shape. And this is uh, usually made in, the leaf is actually a grape leaf, but in my region where, where I come from, uh, Black Sea region, the North region, we actually make it with uh, black cabbage. Uh, and I can tell you, even my students, most of them don't know that one, like haven't tasted that one, because you know, uh, the recipes in region differs, varies very much. It has rice in it. <laughs> And here you see döner. It's the most popular uh, fast food in Turkey. And also you can find this every uh, part of Turkey. And it's a dish of lavash, which is kind of red, uh, this layer. And it's restaurant chicken. <laughs> Now you can see it's wrapped around uh, here. It's chicken, but also uh, you can uh, fill it with meat. Uh, it's wrapped around chicken or um, meat with tomatoes, potatoes, and some sauces, and also pickles. And it's, in my opinion, it's one of the most delicious fast food in Turkey. This is type of fast food. Uh, you can find this uh, food, in, again, in neighboring countries. They're usually called shawarma. I don't know if you know about that. Uh, in Turkey, in Turkish, is banan. Uh, if you translate that word into English, it comes to something like returner or cycler, because the meat actually is in a huge stick and it kind of cycles around itself, rotates around itself, until it's finished, like sold out. Is it like the meat they use in euros and stuff then? Or? Yeah, okay. yeah. Like uh, similar to that, actually, it's, those recipes are based on this one. So okay. this is basically shavings of meat. This example they're showing is a chicken meat, but uh, it's very common to find it in beef. So that uh, meat kind of rotates itself in front of the fire and they shave off slices and give you uh, the meat in between a flat bread which you see it's rolled in a, it's kind of a wrap actually with some vegetables in it too it's very tasty because the yogurt they showed earlier is that tzatziki then or is it very similar to tzatziki uh the yogurt th that one has um cucumbers, cucumbers or mints in it 
uh, what we showed, the yogurt part could be similar to that one. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's uh, uh, a Greek recipe, which has, in Turkish, we call it jajik, which it, when you see the letters as, as written, they are pretty similar to the Greek version. Like I said, when you travel across these countries, you're going to see the same similar food, with diff slight differences in each other, because we kind of share the land and culture for 600 years, so kind of infuses all together. Uh, yes, this is lahmacun. Uh, it's like pizza. Uh, it's around 10 pieces of dough. On the top, uh, it has minced meat, vegetables, and herbs, include uh, onions, tomatoes, and parsley, and it has spices. This is our version. <laughs> 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 onions and ground meat. Uh, it also has uh, spices. This one is also another <laughs> specific to Turkey foods. Uh, this is sort of a meatball, but the meat actually inside and the outside is a grain-based material covered. So uh, you bite into it and get surprised by delicious gooey meat inside, which again, that's what I hear. <laughs> yes, that's deep fried actually. So I imagine Texans would love that. <laughs> we know how to leave. <laughs> Just go to the state fair and find all sorts of deep fried stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is baklava. Uh, baklava is a traditional Turkish dessert. Uh, it's especially made on uh, special holidays or weddings. Uh, it's a dough-based dessert and it has walnuts or pistachios in it generally. <laughs> Have you ever tried baklava? Yes. Baklava also has very uh, different kind of recipes. Actually, all these neighboring countries uh, sometimes try to claim the ownership of the original recipe, which is very difficult to actually go back and find the original recipe. But we can confidently say that baklava comes from Ottoman Empire's palaces when they kind of uh, sugar, sugar cane was kind of discovered and brought into the daily recipes, the palace uh, chefs uh, start making these desserts. This, this is very, very easy. <laughs> those very thinly spread it, and it has maybe 10 or 15 layers in a very tiny dessert, and it's dipped in um, syrup, sugar syrup. And very tasty. Um, but the Turkish version actually is difficult to find in the States. I find a lot of bottles in like, stores where they are usually Greek or Lebanese or Mediterranean. I think uh, I'm not sure if it's Greek or not. Use pistachio. Pistachio. Does yours also use pistachio? Pistachios, yes. We have pistachios, uh, hazelnuts, some beans. Um, <coughs> Different type of 
may not that is really Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, we have sütlaç in here. Sütlaç is a dessert made from milk, rice, and sugar. Uh, and it looks like pudding. It's really delicious. And that's all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rice pudding, simply. And it's, again, delicious. Nothing tastes bad in Turkish. <laughs> Everything is delicious. <laughs> You guys, uh, we're done with food, and if you have any, if you have any questions, we're ready for it. <laughs> Can you please repeat your question? 
So the recipes we use varies according to our family lineage. So it's when I tell you I eat this type of soup, it doesn't necessarily have a standard standard recipe. So therefore, because we cook our own food a lot, it's very difficult to assess exactly what is the nutrient nutrient intake. So we have a very detailed recipe-based nutritional assess, assessment tool, but professionally that might be of interest as well to see how we assess the intake in different cultures. Do you have another question, Amanda? Yes, I do. I saw the black cabbage. You also have a cucumber as well. Black cabbage and cucumber. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 You were talking about the yeah. black cabbage? Black cabbage?